Come on over, kids. Do you still want to hear that superhero story I was telling you about? Yeah! Alright, listen closely to the tale of the Extremophiles and the toughest bacterium that ever lived. In the beginning, our planet was a very dangerous place. Supervillains ruled that world. There were the radiation sisters, heat radiation and ionizing radiation. Heat made the world so hot that we could never have survived there. But her sister was even more terrible. You may not know this, but radiation is another word for light. Some of this light can hurt us, and almost all of it is completely invisible to us, including both of the radiation sisters. Acid burned all that he touched. Dehydration hated water. He preferred to stay on land. Another supervillain, the vacuum, kept to itself most of the time. It stayed up in the night sky and wouldn't let anything come close because a vacuum is a space that won't let any particles inside it, including the air we need to breathe. But Grandpa, how come I haven't seen these supervillains? Are they even real? But you have! They might not look like supervillains, but they can be just as evil. Have you ever felt too hot or thirsty? Or gotten a terrible sunburn? Maybe you accidentally got lemon juice in your eye once? These are the supervillains, still at work! Cool! Even though we couldn't have lived in that old world, some ancient creatures were still able to survive these awful conditions. In fact, this special family of microorganisms were most likely the start of life on Earth. Most of them are invisible to the naked eye and have been living under our noses since the dawn of existence. Undercover agents with superpowers allowing them to thrive in conditions that would kill us in minutes. Like aliens from another world, some of these life forms could survive in the vacuum of space. They've done a great job hiding from us all these years, but their time living in secret is over. Allow me to introduce the Extremophiles. From the sweltering heat, 6.7 kilometers below Earth's crust, to the deepest depths of the ocean, they are found in the iciest conditions known to man. You can find different extremophiles in all of these environments and pretty much any other extreme environment on the planet. But Grandpa, why are they called that? Well, the end of the word is philia, which means love or affection in Greek. The front of the word is the thing that they love. The ones who like it hot are called thermophiles and the ones who like it cold are called Psychophiles. Some like living in very acidic conditions, and some like living in very basic conditions. Extreme acids and bases are harsh chemicals, but acidophiles and alkophiles thrive in these conditions. I thought you said they fought the supervillains. Now you're saying they love them? That's enough from you kids. Love is a complicated thing, as I'm sure you'll find out one day. As for these extremophiles, they live for the fight. Some extremophiles can live in not just one of these conditions, but several. They're called polyextremophiles. Polyextremophiles? Wow! Have you ever met one, Grandpa? Why, yes I have, kids. In fact, I discovered one. Really? That's right. In 1956, I, Arthur Anderson, discovered the one that is known to be the most powerful of them all. He is nicknamed Conan the Bacterium, after Conan the Barbarian, who could defeat any foe. You see, my team and I were trying to sterilize some meat using powerful ionizing radiation. Sterilizing means to get rid of all life, especially those pesky bacteria that live in our food and make us sick. See kids, not all bacteria are like the extremophiles. Some of them can be very cruel, like cholera, and that terrible bacteria that caused the black plague. <coughs> that evil radiation sister ended up almost destroying everything. Even the meat itself, all except for Conan. That tiny red bacterium, whose real name, Deinococcus radiodurans, literally means strange berry that survives radiation. Wow, Grandpa, that's amazing. I didn't know you were famous. Tell us more about what Conan can do. While most polyextremophiles are only resistant to two or three harsh conditions, Conan can protect himself from the cold, dehydration, acid, 
ionizing radiation and the vacuum. These are Conan's arch nemeses, and ours too. But none of them can hurt our super friend Conan. He might even be able to help us fight these extremely evil conditions ourselves. How could Conan help us? He is just a little bacteria. Remember how I asked if you've ever been sunburned before? Well, the reason that happens is because ionizing radiation damages the DNA in our skin. What's DNA, Grandpa? Deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA for short, are molecules that act like an information storage system. The information that they hold gives every part of your body instructions on how it should look and how it should function. If this system gets damaged, the DNA gives your body the wrong commands. Our bodies can usually fix mistakes in the DNA sequence, but sometimes it can't. And if ionizing radiation breaks your DNA in a certain way, the irreversible destruction can lead to cancer, a deadly disease. So if we get hit with that horrible radiation sister, our DNA needs to be fixed as soon as possible. But Grandpa, you didn't answer our question. How can Conan help? Alright, I'm getting there. First, you need to understand that Conan's DNA is different from ours. He can repair the damages left in his DNA after he's hit with this super powerful radiation. He, unlike us, has special machines that properly line up the molecules and fix the broken DNA sequence. This lets him survive attacks from that mean ionizing radiation that couldn't kill him in my meat experiment. If we had some of Conan's DNA fixers to help us too, then we could resist that supervillain just like the most heroic extremophile of them all. Although his cousins and the extremophiles have been around for billions of years, we still don't know the full extent of their power. Unlike other bacteria, Conan and his family aren't here to hurt us, but to help us become super just like them. To harness their powers, however, we need to find a way to transfer them. And with no one standing up to the supervillains all around us, Will you be the super scientist to turn Conan into the most heroic bacterium ever?